I'm Ron Rodos, and welcome to my journey through the real book number 132. This is Gemini, tuned by the great Jimmy Heath, wonderful tenor sax player. Uh, one, uh, not like one of the top five that we hear about all the time, but certainly maybe top 10 or 15 of the post-bebop era. Wonderful player. I remember when I was in college, I used to listen to his version of Confirmation. I think it was from a live album with Tony Perone on guitar. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. I used to sing that solo, and actually that's where I, I think I got the lick, you know, where you gotta go. Where you do this ascending chromatic line starting on C on confirmation, I think it was from Jimmy Heath's solo. Which brings me to the point of just, you know, you don't have to listen to a million different things all the time. You can pick one or two solos or five solos and get to know those so well, they'll stay with you forever. I still use that, you know, that was 30 years ago. Listen to that all the time. Um, so thank you, Jimmy Heath, for that. And uh, he's a great uh, composer and orchestrator and, uh, um, uh, you know, sort of a legit composer in that, you know, writing these big band arrangements that have sections that mirror each other and develop, not just sort of um, uh, what we think of a small group arranging like on, on this tune. Um, but even this, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's a jazz waltz because it's in three. It's actually basically a blues as well with some interesting little uh, things like when they go to the two five at the end, it's a two. And it's going on the, instead of going right to the five, the B flat, it goes to the uh, flat six, a half step higher. And then at the last second before the return of the tonic, it goes to the five, sort of a six five one, um, which brings a uh, quote compositional element that's a little in, uh, different than most uh, blues. Right? And it's, um, it's in 3-4, but it's not a typical jazz waltz where you have this one, two, and three. One, two, and three. It's, it's very straight. If you listen to the recording, it's got a beautiful, pure sound with the, with the um, brass instrument and the sax, and it's more like a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two. By the way, too, when you get to the third line here, it goes from E flat minor seven, and they say A flat seven over G flat. I, I, I don't hear that on the recording, so I just I just played a regular A flat seven generally. Um, I'm not sure why why that's there. Either, either I missed something, or they just put that in, or I, I don't know. Also, I was thinking about what why it's called Gemini. I thought maybe Jimmy Heath was a Gemini, his astrological. Um, sign and I looked it up and uh, he's he's not born during Gemini. Uh, he, it's an October birthday, so I, I don't know, but it's a great name. Uh, maybe it's because it's two different things. It's a blues, but it's also this more straight kind of sound. I, I don't know. So, uh, but here we go. And it's got this beautiful uh, modal thing where it goes from E flat to D flat over E flat, and that D flat with an E flat in the bass can also be viewed as an E flat. 7 or E flat 9 sus 4. So it can, it can be played modally, like a mixolydian mode as well, and it, it plays into that harmony. Um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, see where it takes me. I, I love this open fifth. I love that sound. And then it's sort of never thought about this. It's kind of. kind of comes down, these, these wide open intervals, fourths and fifths coming down relate to that open fifth. Again, what I was talking about him being composer who, who finds these relations between the sections and motivic development and everything. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
happened that I didn't necessarily plan, you know, developing these fifths in that opening, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, went back and forth between more of a maybe traditional jazz waltz feel and a sort of straighter thing that he has here. Um, that's the beauty of jazz, trying these different things out for yourself. So I urge you to uh, check out the tune and, it, you know, trying these, you know, new tunes or new chord progressions we haven't played before gets us to really uh, face that challenge. How do I do this? How do I get through this? How do I find ways to be um, myself in this, this parameter, this harmonic journey that's predetermined for me? It's not the usual ones I always play. So uh, that's our invitation as jazz pianists. Thank you very much for being here. If you're interested in going deep into uh, exploring jazz piano with me uh, on keyboardimprov.com, got a Extensive video course will help you step by step and let the music really just flow. Or uh, Skype lessons, whatever you need, I'm here for you. 
Thanks again, and I'll see you next week with, oh, Giant Steps. There we go. Finally got up to Giant Steps. That's a nice challenge for me, too. See you then.